All right, welcome everybody. My name is Charlie Klausner. This is our strategy development um, second session where we talk about the market industry as well as our customers, both, well, we'll talk about current customers and potential. So <clears throat> we're again reviewing our strategy development for activetravelsvideos.com. We've had some good conversations with uh, Mr. Kylie, who's the owner um, of Active Travel videos.com and we we're just trying to again work through how we can see that both internal and external analysis my team members are there myself that's my role there and uh david clayton zoe and myself are representing our team one and so let's just jump right in um we have some research tasks for this week off october 29th um, this is due the Saturday, which is today, October 30th. Um, we want to highlight, highlight the industry life stage and where it's at, talk a little bit about what the industry is, how we define it, as well as highlight some current customers, see a little bit into the target audience that we can see as potentials, but obviously not try to bias or not try to influence just yet. We're not yet in that stage where we're making recommendations, but we're just going to highlight some of the things that we see, some potential ways um, ATV could go. <clears throat> as well as we'll talk about the identity, the strategy, and the news or kind of new highlights of the competition, which in this case, um, you know, Mr. Kiley himself said that there's no direct competition, but we do feel that the, the overall external factors um, leads to some indirect competition, especially when it comes to these big social media and video sharing sites. <clears throat> so that's our outline. And this is a very common uh, video that we've, or common graph that we've seen throughout our time in this MBA 800 course. We see revenues on the right and then time on the bottom, and that shows our X and Y axis there. And it starts with the introduction of the market itself. There's that growth phase, that maturity phase, and that decline phase. And so when we looked at the video this week, we saw that the sportswear industry, for example, was at the height of that maturity phase. Um, or a little bit beforehand, we still feel that with the travel videos for adventures industry, that's kind of the subset of that digital content that we're looking at. We still feel like that's in the growth area. You know, there's a lot of research that we've looked at um, that says people are utilizing videos online more and more, especially in the short form. So those are things um, that can be viewed more easily on mobile devices. So that's something that we've noticed in our research, <clears throat> as well as the rise of social media companies as incorporating um, TikTok. So this is one of those short form videos, um, kind of gives us the data to see that, um, you know, this industry is still in that growth phase. It's still young. People are using the internet more and more. We're getting better broadband. We're getting better access to mobile internet. So videos on the internet are going to be even more and more a part of our life. And so that's how we feel that this industry is at right, where, we're, where that industry is at right now. So this gives us a lot of opportunities, <clears throat> especially when it comes to a post COVID world or you know even this latter part of COVID, hopefully knock on wood, when people can travel more. So we've taken some uh, research that shows that 57% of people are ready to travel again due to less restrictions in place. Um, and this gives us hope for the entire industry that's going to drive our digital content consuming industry. So here we're looking at kind of the more macro level as we look at what's happening in the external climate of the travel industry and how that's going to influence <clears throat> ATVs, excuse me, ATVs um, positioning in this digital content. Uh, industry segment. Uh, we also see that um, there's going to be 151, this is according to a Google search, um, 151 million next gen travels, travelers that are going to travel after the pandemic. And these 151 next gen travelers include $350 billion worth of purchasing power. So we're talking about a lot of influence and a lot of power when it comes to where these new wave of travelers after this uh, great super, super huge um, global pandemic, where are they going to put their money? Where are they going to purchase? Where are they going to travel? Where are they going to, th and then in turn, find information when it comes to how to travel, where they want to book their travel, what kind of uh, packages they want to include, what kind of active um, kind of uh, adventures are they going to pursue? 
Um, and this one is super huge. The next, the third bullet slide. This is the one when I saw, I said, this is why this can be a successful component of what we're going for with this company, which is to drive traffic to the site so that we can build up that kind of brand image and brand awareness. So we could go maybe later on, uh, Mr. Kylie and his associates can go later on and say, hey, here are our numbers. Here's the data. Here's how many people come to the site. Uh, and then kind of maybe have that be a, a well-positioned spot for a, for a buyout or somebody trying to somebody coming in and saying, hey, this is a, a great bank of resources because that was long-winded, but because 65% of these next-gen travelers use digital content to plan trips. So right there, we're talking about not just the macro level, people are traveling more, but also our micro level, our focus on this digital content. And if we have the best, you know, high quality amount of resources uh, with those 1300 videos, um, then this could be a huge way to tap into that increased traffic as well as kind of increase, um, you know, users to the site. Additionally, there are some things going on in the whole airline industry, allowing travelers to change flights for free. We saw this is very, a uh, lot, lot more common um, in the post COVID world because of the flexibility for travel needs. So this allows travelers to be a little bit more flexible with their timing, which may be able to give them um, you know, greater incentives to do a bit more research, find more digital content, explore their planning of the trip a bit more, as well as if something does come up and they have to kind of do a shift in travel plans. This is uh, something that that's happening in the airline industry that's um, uh, we, we highlight as an and as an opportunity for ATV. <clears throat> now, this is the, the big one here. So there are definitely threats both in the industry as well as competitors. Um, you know, we saw the the five aspects of um, competition and how those really influence in one of our videos this week. Super helpful video that really kind of breaks down um, what's going on. The indirect competitors, who's in the climate? Well, you know, there are still some restrictions and there are some states, especially like Hawaii, which hopefully, you know, here is opening up a little bit more, but, um, you know, there's restrictions on travel. So people come opposed to two years ago just don't have all the capabilities to travel at this moment because of places that are still in lockdown, places just getting out of lockdown, places that just still have greater uh, restrictions on travel. <clears throat> Additionally, COVID we saw a really interesting change in the rental car industry with a lot of those big players uh, selling off some of their fleets, um, which allowed for a lack of transportation, uh, which influences our consumers, uh, which influences our potential customers and our customers that are gonna be doing these trips, hopefully via the ATV site. Now we got to talk about the direct competitors. The you know, Mr. Kylie said that we don't, they don't have specific direct competitors because of what they do, and that certain segmentation of the market is unique, which is true. Um, however, we have big players. Um, YouTube, uh, you know, owned by Alphabet and and Google, has a huge content library, and they are, <clears throat> in our minds, the number one source when it comes to finding. Um, accruing, kind of having that catering, the cultivation of travel content. They're just the ones who really have that. And even um, a lot of the ATV videos are found in that bank as well, but also found right there on YouTube. So their content is huge. They have huge brand awareness. When I was looking just personally as an anecdote, when I was looking um, to explore this small region in France, I went right to YouTube. So it has that kind of recognition. It has that kind of first steps. <clears throat> and not, not to mention too, that there are other uh, home sites. So where the you know ATV um, links its um, resources, so its supply of videos come from the home sites. A lot of them come from home sites of the actual adventurous um, journeys that they're going to be doing or the wine tour or the, the surf surf video company. So the home sites are actually where they may get the traffic. So if our goal is to kind of either build that pie of traffic or get more of the market share of that traffic, um, then we have to compete with the home sites of the content creators 
And then the people that are then interacting with that are who we're, we want to go after. Additionally, there are social media sites and these come in many shapes and form. I didn't put YouTube in there um, because I think of them more, obviously they are a social media site um, with their comments and how they can be social, but mainly I saw them as a digital content library. <clears throat> But social media sites. So the big one after YouTube is Facebook. So we see a lot of people planning or checking out videos, kind of becoming a part of that Facebook world to check out where their friends are traveling, which is the social part of it, as well as to watch videos from each of these other organizations, whether it's the winery or the, the skiing video or the, the hotel or the yoga instructor. <clears throat> So social media sites have a huge influence here, and that's not to mention the, the huge opportunity as well when it comes to tapping into that social media aspect of marketing and advertising. Additionally, Instagram and TikTok are the two big ones when it comes, and as well as Snapchat almost for, for some of the younger generations. But when it comes to those short term or, or short uh, form videos, so we have to keep that in mind. One additional competitor that I felt was needed to be mentioned was a, it's almost a substitute when it comes to our content at ATV, but travel shows um, and also Netflix. When we think about the, the, the big industry, um, you know, what is keeping people on those sites? What are getting people traffic to those sites? It's their content. Um, a lot of these travel shows are now elsewhere so we can watch them on YouTube, watch them on the travelchannel.com site, um, as well as Netflix has a ton of travel shows that are kind of curated and, and built for the, the adventurous traveler, which is who we're also aiming to uh, grab. This brings me to the um, competition, the five aspects of competition. Well, we have the rivalry amongst competitors. Again, um, Mr. Kylie said, we don't have any direct competitors in that space, um, but there are those big um, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, other ways that people are consuming digital media in that way. Threats of new entrants, obviously this requires investments um, and this requires the team. And that's what he said too. He said, if somebody wants to try to copy us, um, you know, good luck. We, we kind of have a head start and they've been the ones who've been curating these and getting them on their site for, for a couple of years now. So he said, well, good luck to you. It's going to take a huge investment. It's going to take a lot of technological uh, background to host the videos, to, to garner the videos, to get all the, the rights to, the, to link them. So that's uh, one part of the, the five stages of competition. And then we have the bargaining. Oh, let's go, let's go down to the bottom. The threats of substitute products or services. This is again, like what I just mentioned um, with those other sites that promote digital content, that promote travel, that promote kind of adventure uh, when it comes to travel. And then let's see the power of the suppliers. You know, this is one thing that we really quite haven't talked about because so far the suppliers um, who are also the content creators are okay with getting these videos onto ATV site, um, but that could change. So that's one thing to keep an eye on. And then the bargaining power of buyers. So again, our customers in this session, um, this is a B2C. So we're, we're getting our information out to customers. The bargaining power of these buyers, you know, right now it's it's they're act actively going to the site, so their bargaining power isn't um, solely based on their um, connection to the dollar sign, more so them getting to the site, so that the ATV product and service itself becomes more lucrative, whether that's via advertising or the traffic, so that it can be turned around and sold to a a larger entity that sees its value. <clears throat> now, this is where we want to make sure not to pontificate and say, hey, this is what we think we should do. Um, it's still early in the stage. We're in the research gathering stage. So we know that at this moment, um, we just want to identify the current customer, identify who's coming to the site and see, hey, how can we grow that? part of it? How can we grow the people that are already going? How can we tap into their social network? How can we grow those like-minded individuals that are using the site? 
um, as well as, and then the next step. So that was one thing um, Professor Schroeder mentioned today was that we can all, we can grow where we exceed um, and, and who's coming to the site currently. And that would be any traveler um, seeking an adventurous trip to a new location or a location that they've been or that they want to find more information on. And also those people that are traveling um, but don't know where to start. This is really, really huge when it comes to um, this post-COVID world that people are going to say, hey, I've been kind of cooped up for a couple of years now. Um, where can I go to find a great bank of resources on my next trip? And ATV's content library allows the customer to book travel plans using the direct link. So that's one of the nice uh, features of our site is that it links directly to the um, host sites page so that they can get right in there, which um, again, our goal, and that's great for them. That's great for us. Our goal again is to get eyes on the site, get that traffic up um, and build that value for these current customers. I'm sorry, I'm just, I just had something to say and then totally forgot it. So um, I'm going to move on here because this is where we really want to focus <clears throat> on our common demographics. Um, so we really want to see what age <clears throat> these people are. Um, you know, are we dealing with what generational gap or generational group? Are we talking about uh, millennials who are kind of blossoming into their careers or baby boomers who might be um, you know, wanting to think about a, a big retirement trip that they're planning. Are these male or female? We've done a little bit of research into that already. We don't want to make um, too huge of recommendations, but <clears throat> is this something even non-binary? Um, who, what uh, gender um, person is looking at our site? And then family and household, what we see those life cycle um, aspects of home, of, of what a home looks like, whether, you know, like young professionals into like family, parents uh, into like um, empty nesters when their kids have grown up into retirees. So where are they at in that family and household place? Race and ethnicity, thinking about who travels more. Um, you know, we've looked at some data on that already. Occupation, so what kind of um, lifestyle uh, based on where they work and what they do? Are these tech workers coming from Silicon Valley or these uh, finance workers coming from New York? Who, who are we looking at when it comes to our demographics? As well as in that plays quite closely in with their income and net worth, um, as well as education. And then a huge one for us that I think cannot be overlooked is the geo demographics and thinking about where our people are, where our potential customers are, where um, the people that are already visiting the site come from. Okay. So we talk a little bit here about potential customers. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because I wanted to focus this, this uh, presentation on the current environment and the that's both the micro and macro um, which I talked about the industry itself, some of those competitors in that space, as well as talk about the current customers, which I just mentioned a little about. What do they look like? Where do they come from? Um, and how how are they act, how are they interacting with the site? But as far as potential customers, you know, we could think more about content creators, social media influencers. This would kind of create that link between our site and then more of those social media um, avenues that I talked about as well as young adults. Um, there's a lot of um, research that we've looked at <clears throat> that kind of hits on that early millennial uh, stage of, of people in, in their uh, careers and life. Oh. So. Oops. And yeah, so sorry about that last bit there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop share, but that was our, our review. You know, we wanted to highlight the overall uh, industry conditions, the lifestyle that it's at, the lifestyle uh, or the life challenge or the life cycle of, uh, of where the industry is at in that growth phase. We also wanted to highlight those really, really big players in the competition reign um, and the realm of where they're at. And then we also want to talk about who are our current customers, uh, adventure seekers, people going to the site to gather that information, planners, um, people that want 
Um, and this is where we think we feel like we have a great um, aspect in that if there's so many people that are wanting to travel, a lot of the data states that. So we're looking to hopefully get more of those eyes to the site and drive that traffic. I think that's all I got for you on this one. So um, I'll just go ahead and post this and thank you for listening.